Harrison Ford is a fugitive on the run and Tommy Lee Jones is tracking him down. Released in 1993, The Fugitive tells the story of a successful Chicago doctor, Richard Kimball, played by Ford, where after a violent break-in, Kimball's wife gets viciously murdered and the authorities believe that Kimball is the murderer, where he is sentenced to death. And after making a grand escape, Kimball is now on the run to prove his innocence and to discover the identity of the one-armed man who is the real murderer of his wife, where he finds himself in a conspiracy in the medical world. All while, tough and ruthless special agent Samuel Gerard, played by Jones, leads a team who will stop at nothing to track Kimball down. So today, we are going on the run to look into 10 things that you didn't know about the fugitive. So, you find this man. Number 10, based on a TV series. The Fugitive movie is indeed based on the crime drama TV series also called The Fugitive, which was broadcast on ABC and was aired from 1963 to 1967, consisting of four seasons. The show was the creation of novelist and producer Roy Huggins, who also created the Maverick TV show and The Rockford Files. The series and movie share the same structured story. A doctor called Richard Kimball is wrongly accused of murdering his wife, and after escaping the death penalty, he goes across country to find the mysterious one-armed man who is the real killer, all while a police officer called Gerard is tracking him down. Incidentally, the show's main plot of a criminal living life on the run from authorities was in fact inspired by the famous French historical novel Les Miserables. The Fugitive TV show would go on to win an Emmy for Most Outstanding Dramatic Series, and in 2002, it was ranked at number 36 in the TV Guide's 50th Greatest TV Shows of All Time. Number 9, Script Writing Chaos. Warner Brothers put a movie version of The Fugitive into production in the late 80s, and considering the TV show consisted of 120 episodes, it seemed that it was a challenge trying to condense all that material into a two-hour movie, which led to multiple scripts to be written. The script writing process for The Fugitive took five years alone, with many script writers coming and going with many different scripts being thrown around. How many exactly? Well, according to the movie's producer, Arnold Coppelson, whom had been trying to get a Fugitive movie made since the 70s, explained that The Fugitive went through 25 different screenplays with up to eight writers. The Fugitive is credited as being written by diehard scriptwriter Jeb Stewart and Waterworld scriptwriter David Tui. Some of the potential scripts were a little weird to say the least. For example, one of the scripts was to reveal Agent Gerard to be the main villain behind the death of Kimball's wife, out of revenge of a surgical procedure gone wrong, or something like that. Which doesn't even make sense when you think about it. Number 8, Casting Possibilities. One of the greatest aspects of The Fugitive is the casting of both Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones, as they are both powerhouse actors with their own unique style, and it's great seeing the two in a cat and mouse chase. However, Ford and Jones weren't the original choice to play their respected roles. Alec Baldwin was the first choice to play the part of Richard Kimball, but Warner Brothers didn't think he quite had enough star power to carry the movie, so he was let go. Other potential actors to play the part were Kevin Costner, Michael Douglas, and Nick Nolte. Nolte declined as he felt that he was too old for the part, so Ford was eventually cast. As for Agent Gerard, the original choice for the part was Gene Hackman, followed by John Voight, but they turned the part down and Jones won the part. And it must be said that Jones' dialogue in The Fugitive is so sharp, he does more or less steal the movie. What I want out of each and every one of you is a hard target search of every gas station, Residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, outhouse, or dog house in that area. As for the movie's main villain, the sneaky and manipulative Dr. Nichols, the part was cast with Logan's run actor Richard Jordan, and some of his scenes were filmed. Sadly though, Jordan had to pull out of the project upon learning that he had terminal cancer, and Jordan sadly died three weeks after The Fugitive's theatrical release. So Jerome and Crab took his place, 
whom Bond fans would recognise as being the main Bond villain in The Living Daylights. Number 7. Troubles During the Shoot Originally, 48 Hours director Walter Hill was on board to direct The Fugitive, but he left the project, to which Andrew Davis came on board to direct, whom one year prior had great success with the Steven Seagal action movie Under Siege, which he also directed. The Fugitive's shoot took about 52 days and was shot mainly around Chicago, as well as other locations such as North Carolina and Tennessee. The biggest obstacles facing the filming of The Fugitive was the script, which, as mentioned, caused lots of issues with the production due to rewrites. Well, even while filming, rewrites of the script were still a daily occurrence, and on some instances, a scene would be written the day that it was to be filmed. Supposedly, director Davis himself, along with Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones, would help write the story, and would come up with certain aspects of the plot, such as a conspiracy surrounding pharmaceuticals. What made things extra tricky was the fact that production had limited time that they could work with Harrison Ford due to him being scheduled to work on other projects. So within a 10 week span, Davis had to finish the movie and edit it. And to help out, Warner Brothers even set up an editing workshop at Warner Brothers Studios with a team of editors working around the clock to cut the movie together. Considering the movie's ever-changing script and hectic editing, it's quite an achievement that The Fugitive turned out to be so good, let alone have a fluent, coherent story. Number 6. Action For Real One of The Fugitive's biggest action highlights was a scene where the Kimball character escapes a bus in the nick of time before being rammed by a train. And to this day, the scene is tense and looks great. Well, that wasn't special effects or miniatures, but a real train ramming into a real bus. The scene was filmed in North Carolina and was done in one take. The footage of Harrison Ford jumping, however, was superimposed over the footage. And the wreckage from filming that scene has since become a tourist attraction. There is another famous scene where Kimball is running on foot from Gerard and his team, where he blends into a St. Patrick's Day parade on the streets of Chicago. Instead of recreating a parade for this scene, it was decided to film at a real St. Patrick's Day parade that took place. And there were no rehearsals. Ford and Jones, along with a following camera crew, just flat out ran into the crowd of a parade that was taking place. Then there's the famous scene at the dam, when we see Ford on the edge looking down. That was real, but Ford was protected by a concealed wire. The shot of Kimball jumping into the dam was achieved by using dummies and about six dummies were used, which cost about $60,000, with the scene in general racking up about $2 million to shoot. Apparently, the manufacturing company who provided the dummies weren't happy, as they were hoping that after filming, the dummies could be reused, but all the dummies were destroyed after being thrown down the dam. Yep, six dummies sadly had to die in order to achieve that awesome scene. Number five, a cameo from Beyond the Grave. So could it be that The Fugitive, an otherwise mere crime thriller from the early 90s, has proof that there is life after death? Well, according to co-producer Peter McGregor Scott, that might just be the case, as he believes that a ghost may have been caught on the film of The Fugitive. He claims that for The Fugitive's DVD release, he was going over the film for its digital transfer, where he saw a strange anomaly. In the scene where Harrison Ford is in the bus wreckage after the crash, he claims to have seen a man in the footage wearing a black hat and looking straight into the camera. He further claims that the man wasn't there when the scene was being filmed, and neither the director or the film crew could explain this strange apparition. Scott would further say that for the DVD release, they removed this strange ghostly presence, but all prints and copies before this DVD release will feature this strange ghostly extra. So what do you guys think? Is Scott just seeing things that aren't there, or should the production have called the Ghostbusters? Number four, the score was a tough gig. The music for The Fugitive was scored by Dark Knight Trilogy composer James Newton Howard, and his score is great. It's dramatic and intense while also capturing the human aspect of the story, with the music almost feeling like a character in the film. However, Howard's time working on the movie was anything but great, or, as he puts it, quote, The Fugitive really kicked my ass. 
Before a score for The Fugitive was composed, music provided by Jerry Goldsmith was temporarily used for scenes that required music, and Howard felt that he couldn't live up to the quality of Goldsmith's sound, but he also refused to quit, so he just kept working really hard in order to create a compelling score. And even when he finished the score, he felt the music that he provided for the movie was a failure, especially music for the action scenes. However, his music was so well received, he earned an Academy Award nomination, which came as a shock to him with him feeling that his score was honestly not very good. Even the New York Times would call the music in The Fugitive hugely effective. It's okay, James Newton Howard. You're allowed to like your score for The Fugitive. I promise you, it's freaking awesome. Number three, the future what now? So as mentioned, the Fugitive's producer, Arnold Coppelson, had been trying to get a Fugitive movie off the ground since the 70s, so he clearly had a love for the show, with the movie being something of a passion project. However, it seems that not many other people who worked on the movie were as passionate about the TV show, or even knew about it. Harrison Ford, Tommy Lee Jones, and director Andrew Davis had supposedly never even heard of the Fugitive TV show when they signed on to make the movie. Davis himself said that in the 60s when the TV show was being broadcast, he was into other things besides watching TV. So considering these people had such a lack of knowledge of the original source material, you would think that that would do a disservice to the movie. Well, apparently not, as thus far, The Fugitive is the only movie based on a TV show to be nominated for an Oscar for Best Picture. In fact, Tommy Lee Jones put the movie's success down to the fact that it was probably because those involved had never seen the TV show. Thus, those who were making the movie were just out to make a good movie without being too attached to The Fugitive show. I'll have to admit, for the longest time, I didn't even know The Fugitive was based on a TV show. I thought it was an original story. And I'm a nerd! It's my job to know these things. Number 2. Sequels, Spoofs, Spin-Offs and Remakes Just like The Matrix that preceded it, for a while it became popular to parody The Fugitive, as scenes and quotes from the movie would often be spoofed, in which both The Simpsons and The Mask have fugitive parodies. No, it wasn't me, it was the one-armed man. Yet there was a stage where it became trendy to spoof The Fugitive. So much so in 1998, there was an entire movie that spoofs The Fugitive called Wrongfully Accused, which starred Leslie Nielsen. However, also in 1998, there was an actual sequel to The Fugitive called U.S. Marshals, in which Tommy Lee Jones returns as Gerard, now hunting a new fugitive. This time, it was Wesley Snipes playing a character called Mark Sheridan. And to me, it kind of feels like a remake, as once again, it revolves around a wrongfully accused criminal on the run trying to prove his innocence. At the time of its release, I didn't even know it was a sequel. I guess that's probably because it wasn't called The Fugitive 2. The film was a moderate success, and starts off with Tommy Lee Jones dressed as a chicken. So it's worth watching just to see that. In 1995, The Fugitive would get an Indian remake, which had a few minor changes to the story, but had the same basic plot as the American Fugitive movie. Then in the year 2000, there was another remake in the form of an American TV series. Only one season was filmed, as CBS cancelled the show, with the short-lived show ending on a cliffhanger. And as recent as 2020, there has been a new series based on The Fugitive, acting more of a spin-off to the original TV show and movie, this time revolving around new characters, and it stars Kiefer Sutherland. It was met with a mixed reception, and I haven't seen it, so I can't really pass comment on it. Number 1. On the Run at the Box Office the Fugitive was released on August the 6th, 1993, and it was a financial success, bringing in nearly $369 million on a $44 million budget. Well, I guess destroying all those dummies in the dam really paid off. It also got acclaim from critics, with it being praised for its edge-of-your-seat suspense and for being an enjoyable, intense chase thriller, with extravagant action set pieces. The performances of Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones were also praised. Roger Ebert particularly liked the approach of the Kimball character always being a few steps ahead of those who were trying to hunt him down, without the story getting silly or unbelievable. The Fugitive was nominated for a string of Academy Awards, and actually won for Best Supporting Actor thanks to Tommy Lee Jones. The Fugitive is basically an adrenaline-pumping, edge-of-your-seat action thriller, which never gets boring or tired. It's also a mystery with plenty of character drama. 
To me, its biggest appeal is the idea of one man being hunted with no resources to help him, but his own wits and determination, as he must defy all odds and outsmart the law in order to prove his innocence. If you like suspenseful movies, then The Fugitive is a must watch. It's a crime drama mystery of the highest order. And of course, the acting talents of Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones is an added bonus. Giving the movies hectic production, it really is a credit to all those involved that the movie turned out as good as it did. You should totally check it out. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I'm off to investigate the one-armed man. See ya!